Just when I think I've survived, she finds a way. My ex-wife and I have been separated for about a year and a half now. She cheated on me with one of her employees also, my co-worker. We all worked together. We were together for eight years, married for just under two. I was young when we met, freshly 19 to her 27. I loved her. I still have love for her. It wasn't the first time she cheated, but it was the last straw. I initiated the divorce and was amiable and kind to her, although she didn't deserve it. I wasn't perfect in the relationship and I recognize my behavior as a trauma response, from both my childhood and our relationship. Because I was so young when we started dating, so many of our friends are mutual friends. I accepted that when we split, I would lose a lot of people, and I did. But she was never satisfied. She has consistently reached out to my own mother, our friends, and my colleagues to needle her influence into my life, and manipulate my support system. She has posted Instagram stories and posts degrading me and accusing me of everything from physical abuse to personality disorders. As my therapist would say, she has consistently tried to violate my privacy and relationships by sharing her story to anyone who will listen. I have had my moments, but for the most part am quiet. Our mutual friend is getting married in October and invited me to the wedding last year. Their save the date magnet is on my fridge. He was the first one I saw after discovering the affair, and met with me for breakfast where we talked and he consoled me. We've known each other a long time, even lived together as roommates while I was dating my ex. He was her friend first and I was shocked at the grace, kindness and support he showed me then. We've become closer while he and my ex have drifted apart, due to her fleeing the city to start a new life with her girlfriend 100 miles away. I've been mulling over going to the wedding ever since I got that invitation, because I knew she would be there. I love my friends dearly and want to be there to support them in their next phase of life. I would never want their special day to be about me, or to stir up drama. I planned to, if I did go, leave my boyfriend at home and go solo. Not drink as to avoid any intoxicated impulses. Celebrate them, love them, and be in bed by 10. So imagine my surprise when my friend invited me to dinner tonight. I immediately knew it had something to do with the wedding, as we are both busy people and rarely have time for formal dinners. I arrived, we had a glass of wine, and he informed me that my ex refused to come to his wedding if I would be there. He said he had hoped for a civil conversation, but she became upset immediately. The overall sentiment was I will not come if she is there, and if I do not come, we will not be friends anymore. He also told me that she's been saying that I'm the one holding up the divorce process and being unreasonable, which is simply not true. She's gotten everything she wanted and left me with so little. I complied to get it over and done with, signed the papers, and have been civil with her. The reason we're not yet divorced is her refusal to submit the paperwork I signed nearly a year ago. I smiled sadly and told him I understood. Shared with him the mental gymnastics I'd gone through since receiving the invitation, told him I loved him and I would never want to cause stress on his day to accommodate me. We finished our meal and I went home and sobbed like a child. It should be expected, I guess. But I'm still incredibly sad about it. I've acquiesced to her everything she asked for. She got to keep the house, our cats, our car. I expected to lose friends but this instance has cut me so deeply. Every time I think I've finally made something for myself, formed a friendship, or built a little slice of life, she finds a way to wriggle in and get her way. I'm angry? 
Why would you choose the person clearly manipulating you into getting what she wants over your friend who has supported you and would rather miss out on your big day than cause drama? I'm going to miss out on my friend's big day and it breaks my heart. Redditor's Reactions Story 2 After Redditor 1, listen. That's not a friend. A friend would have said don't give me ultimatums on who can and can't come to my wedding simple as that. She's doing you a favor. These people don't show up for you when it matters. You've got nearly 10 years on your ex-wife, you've got plenty of time to achieve great things but you need to harden up a bit. Stop all this I love you and understand crap, because people will continue to walk over you. I keep saying this time and again and few people on here do it because they don't want to put the work in. The gym, or boxing class is the best one will literally change a man's life. You meet people and new friends in a week max, meeting women becomes 100 times easier and you build confidence and assertiveness in yourself, which again, makes meeting women 100 times easier. Don't let these people push you around up cut them off. Redditor 2, first it seems like she is manipulating everyone so if you have proof texts, photos, recording etc. Then publish it all and expose her. Stop protecting her. Then maybe it's time to close this chapter of your life completely, maybe it would be better to start over with new people than to continue to deal with this mess. Why did you leave her everything? she doesn't deserve it, did you have a lawyer involved? Redditor 3, I always believed that whatever is within a person comes out in the relationships with others around him. Seeing the way she is treating you. Man, what a sad existence she must be living. Story 2, is it normal? Is it normal? I'm going to make this a long story short. Found my husband was still talking to ex-GF behind my back and meeting her he cheated on me the day after we got married and him and his boy were planning on doing again plan another s time fun found out he was stalking his ex online twitter, instagram, using search app to search her, etsk sending dck picture to women in group. It's a somewhat of a long story. It has been almost a year since since him stepping out on me. I stay in working through it. I got into therapy etsk. Is it normal that even after months months and months to have these intrusive thoughts? Like today for whatever reason there are question I want to ask about some of the stuff that happened last July. Question I never even know about asking in the past but now I want to ask certain question. Like is that normal? I don't want to keep bringing up what happened since we are moving on and trying to put this behind me. What can I do to shake up those thoughts? Honestly I don't even know what I am asking, I feel I am rambling. Update, denial stage I think. Hi moment. I'm just ranting. I think today is the denial stage. I have been cheated on last year right after my wedding day, XGF, online girls, Lamau there is so much I don't even know WTF is wrong with me for giving so much chance. This year alone he told me he was thinking about his ex and then started hitting her up, cheated on my three time. I finally found out and the latest one is he disappeared for a while 24 hour and found out he used shortcut to make specially arrangement for other women so he can make sure he texts them and give them attention. Found out a month ago and two week he went and met one of the girl and then told I quote I'm not going to tell you what happened and where I was. Y'all just know I found everything he been doing again for the last three month. He tried to deny because I don't have the password to his phone but I saw it one day when the phone was unlocked. The snap messages. Never in my life, someone had anyone ever disrespected me in their life and a man at that. I'm so ducked up in the head y'all for two year. Finding out everything is cray and the latest, triggered to the core but I summarize it in a way. I'm not okay but I will. 
Today I am in denial stage because I'm happy and I'm okay but I think I'm low-key having a small psychotic moment because the high are high. I'm about to drink a little and then sleep. I'm okay right now though. I feel high. Redditor's Reactions, Story 3 After. Redditor 1, Reconciliation will not be possible since he's not even close to being remorseful. I would suspect that cheating before you even married. I would talk with a lawyer on options. Redditor 2, and here we once wondered what battered wife syndrome looked like. You're not going through denial, you're going through a dissociative episode. It's depressingly common in emotional abuse situations for people to basically snap their minds into pieces and try to live in only the happiest pieces while trying and failing to ignore the agony in the unhappy pieces. Get rid of him and you'll have to go through a multi-year decompression phase, where you feel lethargic, irritable and low energy while you emotionally reconnect all the pieces of your mind together and become a singular human again. If you don't get rid of him then you're going to experience these feelings you're currently experiencing x100, eventually to the point where you either commit suicide without feeling a thing, or to the point where you eventually odd on intoxicants because you can't bear the feeling of being able to remember literally anything because it hurts too much. The choice is yours, ultimately you're in a form of total dissociation from reality and nobody has influence over you beyond yourself so I'm not going to bother pushing you towards one or the other. Op answer, yes my head hasn't been right since the whole incident. Bruff back painful trigger and a lot I have to now deal with. I did break up with him already so that's that. Redditor 3, you don't deserve this. You have him the chance to become faithful to you. You are being emotionally abused. Lose some instant weight and dump his ass. Let yourself feel the pain then you heal. You tried. He didn't. You will get through this. Story 3, Girlfriend 21 cheated on me male 22. My girlfriend and I have been dating now for two years. About five months ago we got into a huge argument, and decided it would be best if we had a couple days to digest the argument. So I went home to my parents for the week and she did as well. We are in college and lived in apartment building together. Not same room but same building we faced timed each other every night and most nights was an argument but we were working through it. After a week we got back together in person and started building us back up. A few weeks later we felt back to normal but something about her seemed off. After some prying and questioning her she basically told me she cheated on me with a neighbor guy. She said she went over to his house because they are family friends and needed someone to talk to get her mind off of our fights. Basically some drinks were involved and one thing lead to the next. Luckily she took plan B the next day and she claims she felt really bad. Now it's been 5-6 months but I just feel so disrespected in the relationship as a man. Also I have never been someone that cared about body count but now it is really eating away at me thinking about her and that guy that I occasionally have to see since he is close friends with her family which also we haven't told anyone about her cheating yet. I don't post on Reddit often but I am completely lost on what to do. Like I was planning on marring this girl, and had my entire life planned out and now I feel like I am just staying because it's the easiest option then restarting. Redditor's Reactions, Story 4 After. Redditor 1, My Man? I know it's hard to hear but it's a college relationship. The fact that she was okay with cheating on you after some arguments, says all you need to know about her. If she will do it once, she will do it again. Even if you guys weren't technically dating, it's extremely disrespectful. Don't let that sort of stuff slide. You are disrespecting yourself by putting up with that and not holding her accountable. 
She knows now that she can do stuff like that and you will just put up with it. She knows she can disrespect you and it most likely makes her respect you less over the course of the rest of the relationship, even if only subconsciously. Redditor 2, when this argument happened, you both were at a crossroads where you had to decide to either fight for your relationship or to give up on it. While you decided to fight for it, she gave up. The main reason why I don't think that this can work out long term is for two reasons. Reason 1 is, she didn't even care about your health and used protection. I would guess that you both had S time since and that she didn't got tested for STDs afterwards, right? Please get tested for STDs, better safe than sorry. Reason 2 is, that she will keep on seeing and meeting with her lover, he will remain as a part of her life. They will laugh together, talk with each other and most of all, he will be there the next time when you have an argument. And since she has no one else to talk to about her cheating, who do you think will she talk to when she needs someone else to talk about what she did and doesn't want to talk with you? Reconciliation can just not work out if the lover remains in their life. Trust me, staying with her is not the easiest option, it is the option that sets you up to a constant feeling of pain and anxiety. Redditor 3, so she you have an argument she gets drunk with another man and she lets him hit her raw. Clearly she has little or no respect for you. It is time to show yourself some respect and move on. You are young. Of course it will hurt but you have plenty of life ahead of you. Story 4, Social Media with Former Student. I have been with my partner for over three years. Without going into too much detail, they were actively emotionally cheating on me with a former student. My partner sent her money, invited her to drinks, offered to spoil her. He even sent her photos where I was right next to him and photos I took of him on vacation. I searched his phone off of a hunch. I reached out to her and she agreed to let me call her so we could confront him on the phone. She had no idea I existed. When I got her in speaker phone he ran out of the house. I'm sick to my stomach. I tried to speak to him about it, but he doesn't feel like he did anything wrong because she graduated four years ago. He called her a liar. She's not. I feel so disgusted and angry. She sent me a few screenshots but I didn't want more because I didn't want to have everything replaying in my head. I spent years with this man. Why he added her on social media disturbs me. Is this man a predator? Is this behavior going to escalate to younger students? Is he seeing his students this way? I can't believe I was such a bad judge of character. I can't put the side of him I knew together with the side of him that was actively trying to meet up with a former student, sending her money, sending her photos and kisses emojis. My life is upside down. Why was I completely blinded and such a bad judge of character? Redditor's reactions, story 5 after. Redditor 1. Report him to his principal or superintendent. Redditor follow-up, teacher here. That is useless. She is not a current student, and is over the age of 18. Social media policies do exist in schools. Usually it's to not at current students. I have several former students on mine. It's nice to check in and see how they are doing, what career they have, and their families. THSD said, I would never entertain the idea of a romantic relationship with one. These kids are like my children. The administration office won't care or get involved unless he has a current student. Redditor 2, ooh. I'm so glad you followed up on your hunch, most people don't for some odd reason. So good on you for listening to your gut instinct. Don't be so hard on yourself from being a bad judge of character. It sounds like he has a lot of people fooled. 
You don't mention if you have children or not but please don't let children around this scumbag. Gross. Op answer, thank goodness no children. But his previous partners did have children and this girl, as a baby daughter. Redditor 3, that's quite disturbing and he likely began grooming her far before she graduated. Run very far from this man. He's a highly disturbed individual. Story 5, this is going to be the hardest thing I've done. I didn't respect myself the first time when I forgave her six years ago. I isolated us from anyone that knew the truth to hide my shame. I still love her. I know she's broken in the head, or her conscience doesn't exist. And I hope for our son's sake she really is honest in therapy this time. I'll support her efforts as much as I can. The AP is still in the picture, he's been waiting on the sidelines while we were in therapy to see if we could fix us before I was made aware of him Sunday. I only know because she felt guilty for all of our progress when she was holding this secret. There is no progress with a lie present for every step. She stopped seeing him but didn't stop talking to him. He's been there every day for her the past eight months just a text away. She really thinks she can have us both. This burden ahead, untangling our lives, our history, all while trying to spare our son the trauma we both had. Neither of us had a model for marriage or even a healthy relationship growing up. My fear is we're going to curse him with the same thing. I refuse. I have to cut it out. I will find someone else and give him a healthy example. I hope she will do the same, because the AP showers her with support while everyone in her life is essiting all over her for doing this to me again. That won't help her get the help she needs to be a better model for our son. I have no control. I'm aware. It doesn't stop me from hoping and voicing that hope. I hope she finds someone better for her than me. But better than someone that was willing to sacrifice her son's family. I hope I find someone better than her for me. I hope we can all for a future us support our son together. This is all I want now. I'm in so much pain. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1, the worst feeling is to think you were both on the same page. Foeing everything to save this marriage when in reality you were the only one. Redditor follow up, the worst. The times I tried to give my ex chances, only to have him still be lying during times of reconciliation. I gave that man everything I had. I gave him the little bit of dignity I had left, only so he could demolish me. I finally left. Best decision I've ever made. I just wonder sometimes why things couldn't be different. Redditor 2, good for you, choosing you and your son over her is probably one of the best decision in your life. She made her choice, now she has to deal with the consequences. Make sure to talk with a good lawyer, focus on you and your son. Redditor 3, I would tell her family someone related to her exactly that. That you don't want her to be isolated from everyone and fall into the AP's arms that you want to keep your son safe as much as possible. Op answer, her sister is already telling her how you got him is how you lose him. I hadn't heard that one. Redditor 4, 6 years with the AP still in the picture. Wish all you want for her to get help prioritize your healing first and foremost so your son can have at least one reliable parent. That means grey rocking and implementing the 180. You have to prioritize yourself and your happiness at this point. You can't help her and will only draw yourself down further. Op answer, whoa whoa whoa. No. Different AP. New AP. Not that it's better, but she fell into the same pattern six years later and hid it for eight months with someone new. Redditor 5, this is heartbreaking. 
I'm sorry you're going through this. Were you two married? Are you both just choosing to walk away, or is it Moreso coming from you? You mentioned you haven't informed people around you because this shame. But I'm wondering if you'd be willing to let people know how to gain support. Like your family or some close friends. Someone close to you that could help alleviate some of the burden of what you're going through. Op answer, we are married. Almost, 10 years. I'm done being committed to someone that can't commit. We have a two-year-old. I didn't not inform my close family and friends, I just isolated myself from them for six years because of the shame I felt regarding forgiving something I shouldn't have forgiven.